Hey, if somebody wanted me to do a video, I'll just get my guitar in the one shot. Somebody wanted me to do a video about duo playing. Um, I think there are many videos to be had in, in duo playing. Um, I just wanted to focus right away on the thing that um, terrified me. <laughs> I'll move back a bit. Yeah, that's better. Um, the thing that terrified me uh, is when, imagine you're on, on stage and you've got a sax player and it's just you, and then the sax player calls uh, Olio or something at, at a nice bright tempo like, you know, 240 minutes, uh, sorry, 240 beats a minute. So this, uh, this is a two and four. I kind of tempo right, it's quite fast, right? Um, so you know, it'll take a solo, right? So what, what do you do? How do you keep that, that tempo in your plane? And it's not it's not necessarily uh, it's not necessarily what you think, I don't think. So I mean what I what I want to do is I want to say First of all, that I'm not a virtuoso polyphonic jazz guitarist. I don't have those sorts of Ted Green or you know Martin Taylor sort of chops where they can play a bass line and a melody at the same time. And also, I think it's quite hard to improvise that stuff. I, I kind of get the feeling that um, Martin Taylor uh, kind of composes a lot of his stuff, um, and it's great. But it's kind of arranged as modules, maybe that he swaps around. But I mean, unbelievable guitar playing, but hard to certainly hard, impossible for me to improvise, you know. And then there's Ted Green, and Ted Green's kind of a genius, you know. So I, I don't know, I can't really get into what those guys are doing. And I, I'm, a, I'm a plectrum player anyway. So what can I do as a, as a sort of plectrum player to make sure that I'm communicating the sense of the tempo and um, the harmony when I play on something like a, a rhythm changes at 240 beats a minute? And the answer is um, you need to, I think, communicate enough information, but not go overboard. So um, there's something in between, you know, just like playing one note. One, two. That doesn't really give enough information about the tempo. You might do it a couple of times, but after a while the ear starts to go, oh. And then there's of course, you know, playing like long lines of um, eighth notes. And I find if I do that, then it can get a bit much, uh, even if I could keep it going without rushing. And keeping a sense of the tempo, I find that quite hard as well. So, the first thing I think is to find a, sort of a way to play single note lines that gives you a comfortable place to pull back to, and you go, I'm expressing this tempo, but I'm not going crazy, I'm not rushing, you know, and I'm not sort of uh, having to cram loads of notes in. So, it's having this sort of place where you can play just a few notes, a bar, um, reasonable, uh, and, and you can just always come back to that before you have to, you know, before you put in maybe another run or some chords or whatever. So that, that's what I'm looking for, it's kind of a, a comfort zone at this tempo, if that makes any sense. One, two, three. So the obvious way of, of you know, just giving a sense of the tempo is just to go one and three, right? So, um, and what we can do is we can use basically chord tones. So I'm playing mostly chord tones there, just on one and three. And as you can hear, it gives a sense of the uh, harmony, hopefully, um, even though I'm not always playing root notes. Uh, so let's do a bit more. One, two, one, two. <laughs> There's a few funny notes there, but, but it gives you that's the sort of thing you'd practice, right? Um, just through the changes, just to get a sense of, you know, this is great practice, you know, don't get me wrong, but it of itself doesn't necessarily communicate the swing of jazz, does it? It's like. <laughs> you know, you can hear the changes, hopefully, but you can't necessarily hear the, the swing. So to do that, it's very simple. We just incorporate some of those pushes that I was talking about in my. Um, I'm going to do an accompaniment video as well. So, uh, what that means is instead of just playing them straight, you go. Boom, da, boom, da, 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 da. 
So let's try that with just the chord tones and using a few pushes. Try that again because that wasn't necessarily the best uh, demonstration. I'm using a few passing tones there towards the end. So you can do that uh, using passing tones. Now you notice I'm feeling the time in too. Let's check that. I'm yeah, it feels very relaxed. One, two, one, two, one, two. So I'm going to use a few passing tones now and, you know, just, just keep that sort of sense of uh, boom, boom, dee, boom, ba, 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 boom, ba, ba. Three, one, two, two, two. So hopefully that gives you uh, an idea of the harmony and also of the of the tempo as well. Let me just check that I haven't dropped the tempo. Isn't it deceptive? So boom, 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 boom. If I play with them. It doesn't feel it doesn't feel fast when I do it like that. So you might say, well that's great, you know, it's nice to have a single note thing, but what else can I do um, to fill it out a bit? And of course one thing you can do is what we call self-comp. So imagine like you're a pianist with a left hand and a right hand, so you're gonna play a little short phrase. One, two, mm. let me sorry, let me try that again. One, two. So I'm using a mixture of um, single note uh, lines that are quite simple. You know, and, and sort of um, some runs as well, like... Uh, like, like, that, like that, that too, just to create a little bit of contrast and excitement. Um, but really I'm thinning the whole thing in two, okay? which um, is something I learned from Barry Harris, but also um, Hal Galpa as well. Okay, um, so uh, that's great. Um, what else can you do? Well, you can use, obviously, you can use octaves, maybe. I like to do that on F. Actually, so maybe I'll move over that. <laughs> Look over that one, but you know, you can, you can do like. Okay, so one thing I like to use is high uh, register chords. So when you do these, it's kind of nice to have a melody to them. Let's try that again. Comping. Line. Well, comping. More chords. So let's mix it up, right? Uh, using some eighth note lines there. 
But, you know, let's just bring it back a little bit, because I have a tendency, I think, to go into this eighth note world. So let's not use any of that and just use chords and self-comping and simple syncopated lines. I think also maybe I sped up as well. That's not too bad. One, two, two, and two. Sorry, a little inaccurate. Let's try that again. One, two, four. Nah, nah, so eighth notes. Ooh! I'm in, I'm in that zone now, aren't I? So that's the sort of thing. And I hope you find that useful, you know, it's just like, uh, it's a bit like juggling, you know, kind of... That's kind of a bit boring, so you might want to put a line in here. But too much of that and you'll start playing too many lines. Simple like blues lick almost, and then... articulating that at the end but I mean even if that happens you kind of as long as you kind of keep where you are in your body it's not going to sound bad you know anyway thanks for watching hope you find that useful that's how I would do it yeah and it's still at 120 straight 240 so that's good thanks for watching